On today's show, Faraday Future showcases its fleet of prototype FF91 sedans and sticks to its guns about starting production this year. Tesla confirms it halted Model 3 production temporarily to improve the production line process, and our good friend Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge puts a kitchen in his Peugeot Ion. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host. And as always, I'm here to bring you the choice morsels of cleaner, greener transportation and energy news. As always, thanks for joining me. This week, a Volkswagen AG, parent company to Volkswagen Cars, and many other well-known brands, including Audi, Porsche, Skoda, and Seat, announced that it's going to spend $25 billion on securing itself a massive supply of the raw materials needed to sustain it producing upwards of 3 million electric vehicles per year across its various brands by 2022. Despite describing the move to electric as a change of course for the Volkswagen Supertanker and promising 80 new electrified models would launch across the various Volkswagen AG brands in the next few years, the company CEO Matthias Muller reiterated that Volkswagen won't be turning its back on internal combustion engines, a move which I think will ultimately hurt Volkswagen if it waits too long to ditch, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. As I said in last week's show, let's talk, more do, less diesel doo doo. The automotive industry may have been on death watch for Faraday Future for the last few years, but this week the company published a new video showing its fleet of FF91 beta prototypes it's using to bring the production car to market. Promising us more videos in the not too distant future, presumably from the test track, Faraday Future seems to be holding on to its planned 2018 launch date. Given the prototypes it had this year at CES did not appear to have a finished interior, and they also had a roll bar in between front and rear passengers, it's going to be interesting to see how much progress Faraday Future has made in the last few months. And it will also give us an idea of how far the company has to go before it has a production intent vehicle to show the world. Given it still wants to start production this year, time is most certainly running out. Later this year, Audi will launch its first mass-produced long-range electric car in the form of the Audi e-tron Quattro SUV, promising an NEDC calculated range of around 310 miles, 500 kilometers per charge of its 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. I'm guessing the Audi e-tron Quattro will likely have a real world 260 miles, 420 kilometers in everyday driving. But while we know plenty about its specs, including its 320 kilowatt triple electric motor setup and 150 kilowatt DC quick charging capabilities, we've not known that much about its price. This week that changed when Audi announced a German market pricing of 80,000 euro for the car. That price would include VAT at 19%, so we can expect a US market pricing of between $82,000 and $83,000. This puts the e-tron Quattro at a higher sticker price than the entry-level Model X in the US, but below the same car's price in Europe. In other words, this is a car that I think will probably sell better in Europe than it will in North America. Just before the end of last year, we covered Kitty Hawk, the electric drone company backed by Google's Larry Page. Its first product, the Kitty Hawk Flyer, was something of a cross between a jet ski and a multi-bladed recreational drone. And to be honest, while it looked fun, it was far from the autonomous air taxi that the company had said it wanted to make. Well, it turns out that that's been in development for the past eight years, and this week we got to see it for the first time. Called the Cora, the two-seat VTOL electric aircraft promises to revolutionize our cities by offering autonomous personal air travel as easily as you can get a rideshare. Not only that, but Kitty Hawk has announced a partnership with Zephyr Airworks in New Zealand, who aims to work with local regulators to make New Zealand the first place in the world where you'll be able to ride in an autonomous air taxi. This is most certainly a story to keep your eye on, so as always, I'll bring you the latest when I have it. Earlier this month at the Geneva Motor Show, Porsche unveiled its Mission E Cross Turismo concept car, a more rugged, less sporty CUV variant of the Mission E sedan that Porsche will be bringing to market in a few years' time. The Mission E Cross Turismo was produced and showcased as a potential production vehicle, but Porsche hadn't made any firm decisions on the car's future 
by the time the show rolled around. This week, however, we learned that the Mission E Cross Turismo was so well received by both the media, existing customers and fans alike, that Porsche is now seriously considering greenlighting it for production. In one online questionnaire, Porsche received a 74% positive feedback for the sporty wagon. It seems even hardened Porsche fans are finally realizing that electric propulsion could have a place in the garage of the future. As I'm sure you know, Elon Musk's Twitter account is a source for many a news story thanks to Elon's propensity to announce new products and projects at 280 characters a time. This week was no exception, with Elon tweeting that the boring company was shifting its priorities for urban tunnel-based travel, prioritizing the moving of pedestrians and cyclists across town in specially designed passenger pods before providing personal vehicle travel. It's a move which makes total sense, provided it can help cut down private vehicle use and thus cut congestion. But we're still a long way from seeing any extensive boring company networks under major cities, thanks to the massive amounts of red tape that accompany such endeavors. Since Tesla began production of the Model 3 last summer, Elon Musk has talked several times about the challenges facing the company. Referring to the factory as production hell, Musk has acknowledged that bringing Model 3 up to volume production has taken longer than everyone thought, with some pretty big bottlenecks in the production line slowing down vehicle construction. This week, we learned that Tesla halted production at the end of last month for four days to tackle the problem and has now resumed Model 3 production apace with a hope of reaching 2,500 cars per week by the end of this month. At the same time, however, CNBC published a story this week citing Tesla employees who claim there's a high ratio of flawed parts being produced for vehicles, parts which ultimately have to be shipped back to remanufacturing facilities rather than get fixed on the line. Tesla denies this. On this channel, we generally focus on covering cleaner, greener transportation that you'll be able to buy or use, but the potential for electric vehicles in industries you probably won't ever have contact with are just as important. Take the Artisan Z40, a brand new 40-ton mining truck which was unveiled earlier this month at a gold mining facility in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, Canada. Far smaller than a comparable diesel-engined 40-ton mining truck and producing more torque too, the Z40 features an automated swappable battery pack to ensure downtime is kept to a minimum. With no rumbling engine, it's also a lot nicer to drive and could help revolutionize the mining industry for good. I should also note here that Artisan Vehicles, the company behind the Z40, also produces an all-electric two-yard, four-ton load haul dump mining vehicle, so expect more news from this company in the future. For as long as I can remember, Fiat CEO Sergio Marchione has been vocally dismissive of electric cars, moaning about the amount of money they cost to produce and how much money the company is losing on every single plug-in car they make. But with the rest of the auto industry now gunning seriously for Tesla and working on their own plug-in models, Marchione is slowly changing his tune. Sure, he still seems to hate electric vehicles, but earlier this month in Geneva, he took part in a roundtable question and answer session with journalists, at which he admitted how underestimating the electric vehicle market in China was a big mistake adding that the company is looking to rectify that. Will it mean a wider choice of plug-in vehicles for other markets? Well, don't hold your breath. It seems FCA doesn't seem to have any firm plans right now, and with China being the biggest auto market in the world, the company's going to focus there before it focuses on other markets. And finally, when it comes to electric car customization, most of us stop at applying tints to the windows, tweaking the sound system, putting on some nice new wheels, or perhaps even some improved suspension. But the lovely Gavin Shoebridge, aka Kiwi EV, has just made a fully functional kitchen complete with sink, refrigerator and stove, and he's put it into the back of his European Peugeot Ion EV. Gav, a Kiwi native who now lives in Slovakia, has not only made the kitchen great for camping adventures over the summer, but says it can easily be removed when he needs more load carrying capabilities. As usual, the video he's made is fun and very well produced, so go give it some love after we're done here, which, as it happens, is about now. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, 
be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spin by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, Kakite, see you next time.